All right, today we're going to be looking at the WAM108T, which is arguably one of the more desirable radio frequency detection products that are available on the market at the moment. It's made in the UK by a company called JJN Digital. It's relatively robust. It comes with a uh, robust carry, carry case for uh, safe transportation. It has a number of unique selling points which is what makes it so ideal to use and desirable for people conducting sweeps. It has the ability to detect anything from 0 to 14 gigahertz which is quite a broad range. It comes packed with a, a number of items within the carry case one of which is the main unit body itself comes with a memory stick to transfer the data from the unit to a computer which can then be utilized as evidence. It comes in the form of a graph so it outlines what it detected, uh, what time and what day. Uh, the timing is actually accurate down to the second. Obviously it comes with a charger. This isn't in here at the moment because it was just on charge prior to putting it back in its case. But the charger is interchangeable uh, in that it comes with various adapters so that you can use it in various countries that was the british one this is the american version north american version and this is the european adapter comes with a number of tenor uh four in total um the short stubby uh, aerial which they refer to it uh, these ones here which are the medium and longer ones uh, they refer to these as whip antennas when I say they, I mean the manufacturers actually refer to them as whip antennas. But I'll outline what they do individually at the moment. And it comes with this triangular shape antenna as well, which of course we'll go into more detail later on. But just it, uh, to let you know at this point, it's uh, a directional antenna to try and pinpoint exactly where the signal is coming from. I think when you're looking at products to conduct uh, technical surveillance countermeasure sweeps with, you're really looking for what makes them different, especially when you're spending the amount of money like something that this costs. And this has a number of unique selling points, I believe. One of which is the ability to transfer the data from the device straight to a computer. I think that's quite ideal. But more pertinently, I think it's the fact that the signals are broken down into their own individual categories and bandwidth so I'll explain more in a moment but as you can probably see at the moment it's broken down into a number of categories it's eight in total so the one on the left hand side and I will demonstrate this so the one on the left hand side is for all signals that it's going to pick up so that's the whole broad range if you like it's the 0 to 1.4 so that's going to show you that it is picking up a signal and the strength of that signal as well but what it then does is it breaks it down into two further main categories and what you can then do if you're unsure as to what those categories are in their own respective fields then you can dig deeper so to speak with by the going up or down and that will then show you exactly what signals it's picking up whether it be bluetooth a wi-fi device or a video audio continuous device and you can do that again here by going up and it will tell you exactly what it's detecting on this dynamic graph here. So let's uh, take it out of the box and look at its functionality. Okay, so I'm going to try and uh, demonstrate how to work this device. Unfortunately, it does have a reflective screen, so you are going to get uh, reflections of, of myself in the video, but try to disregard that if you can. So firstly, what you want to do is attach the three main antenna. It does have four, as I said earlier. This one here is to utilize if you uh, want to identify the direction from which the signal is coming from but we'll hopefully demonstrate that later on one of the downfalls one of the only downfalls about this product i think is the fact that this here is slightly old-fashioned and i'll show you what i mean to i'm going to press ok which is going to take me to the main menu all right and what i mean by that is you'll see here that it's use the pen to point it out it's selected over there so if I'm going, to, I'm going to go right and it should go over to the power you see what I mean so it's then it's showing you power off option I'm going to go right what it doesn't do though is allow you to go up and down which is a little bit annoying and a little bit old-fashioned but I'm nitpicking because it really is the only thing that I dislike about this product it's my 
preferred device if I'm being honest with you because of what it you know what it offers in terms of outlining and, and denoting exactly what signal it's detecting so I'm gonna go through the settings one by one uh, the main screen is just a back button so it'll take it back to the main screen um, power off you would press ok and then go left or right to turn it off uh, you can change the time and date obviously in this setting here the data log allows you to view all of the events that have occurred over the last uh, scanning period so I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom and show you what it does it highlights uh, everything that it, uh, the events so it labels them uh, fr ranging from 0 0.1 and I think it goes up to 4000 but I'll have to double check that it will tell you the time and date down to the second it will tell you what type of signal it was it will either tell you the frequency or the type of device that it was detecting it gives you a signal range from 0 to 20 20 being the maximum strength is signal and 0 being the weakest and the DUR is short for duration so it's telling you how long that signal lasted for so if we look at event uh, log number 008 it was on the 10th of the 7th 2019 12 minutes past 11 and 7 minutes past that second that minute sorry and the signal the frequency was uh, 1800 gigahertz and the strength of the signal was a 20 so it was a very strong signal and it lasted for a duration of 10 seconds so that's quite useful when it comes to logging what happened and potentially for evidencing or reporting purposes so to go back we press OK and then press OK to go back into the menu uh, you can erase the log I'm going to do that now just to show you how it's done so when you click on erase log you press OK and then you have to go left to confirm your choice and then it takes you back to the main screen so you have to go back into the menu if you want to continue so rather than going down that doesn't work you have to keep going along to the right now what I'm going to show you next is actually quite important but before I do go into the volume control, I'm going to show you the other options. So it has a beep option, which is literally a beep, 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 which I honestly find quite annoying, so I tend to have it off. A vibrating option is an alternative to the beeping. You can have them on both at the same time, but you, then you're going to get a beeping and a zzz, 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 vibrating constantly because it's always going to detect something again. I, I find it quite pointless, to be honest with you, because it shows you on the screen whether or not it's detecting something, so I don't really... I don't tend to use that the panel light on and off it's if you're working in darkness it's quite useful so I'm going to turn it off now and you'll see that it's just turned the the panel lighting off so back into the main menu I'm going to turn it on just because it looks better and lastly is the band selection so then you can choose what you want to detect and what you do not want to detect of course I would always recommend having them all on and if you have to rule something out, you you can. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is demonstrate what happens when you turn the sound on. So back into the menu, OK button. Can't go down. So across, 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 across. Volume control. And once you're in there, you have to use the up and down arrows to control the volume. So I'm going to turn it on four. I'm sure you can hear that. That's four there. And then to exit, you press right or left and go to OK, and it'll take you back to the main screen. At the bottom, what you're going to see is a little bit of a graph here that changes with the signal it's receiving. I'm going to give you an example. So I'm going to turn the mobile phone on and put it quite close to it. So you can see there, what it's bringing up is actually demodulation. All right, and it's coming through an inbuilt speaker through the device. The really cool thing about this is if it was uh, an audio continuous device, like a listening device, what it would actually do is enable you to hear what the device can hear through this. So you'll be able to hear yourself speaking through this device, which is pretty good. It makes it very easy to identify exactly where it's coming from. Uh, you can go through a process of elimination to do that. And it is actually very very useful my mobile phone's on you can see it's picking up a device now what I'm going to do I'm going to call voicemail I'm going to take my phone quite far away to do a proximity test so my phone's calling voicemail now I'm calling voicemail now it has a 3G connection 
and I'm going to bring it closer. And I know you can't see this. I'm going to do this. Uh, there, it's picking it up. It's about 20 centimeters away, maybe 30 centimeters. And there you go. It's picking up. It's got a good signal there. If it was on mid medium, for example, the phone's about about two meters away actually, and it's got it's picking up quite thoroughly there. You can see that now. But that's the demodulation that you can see there. It's quite annoying to have one. I'm going to switch it back. To, I'm going to put on maximum to just picking up other random third party signals now. We're pretty much in central London, so it's quite a built up area. So it's going to be picking up different signals and whatnot. I'm going to turn my phone onto airplane mode. Uh, you can see it's picking up someone else's mobile phone signal there. So it's picking up a few what are potentially Wi-Fi uh, signals there. But to clarify and confirm that that's the case, we're going to press down to explore in more detail what the signal is. And I'll use my pen to point out because my finger's not ideal. Uh, the yeah, you can see it's a Wi-Fi signal here. The Wi-Fi device in this property has now been switched off, and so these are third-party Wi-Fi signals. And the reason it's doing that is because it's set, as you can see, to maximum. So again, to switch it from maximum to medium to minimum, you just go left, left to turn it to minimum, or one right to turn it to medium and that's it so the device is pretty straightforward to operate once you get the hang of it it's actually quite ideal I'm going to show you uh, the the beeping control on and off as well so I'm going to turn that on now and I'm going to turn my mobile phone on because it's on minimum so I'll turn my phone on you'll see so it gives you a beeping sound as well as the, the audio demodulation as well and if I was to turn it on vibrate which I, I think you can you should be able to hear the vibration but you can certainly feel it again I prefer not to bother with the beeping too much because the audio modulation is is good enough along with the visual indication as to what it is it's picking up I'm going to turn the volume down so you have to do this with the up and down arrow. Uh, just a quick one on the directional antenna. You remove the stubbier antenna and put it there. That gives you some directional indication as to where it's going, where the signal's coming from. So that, in essence, allows you to pinpoint exactly where the signal is coming from. But as an overview, it's a very reliable product. I've used this for a number of years now. It, it, companies all over the world use this product. It's British made. So I think for me, the key selling points are the fact that it has such a huge range. So zero to 14 gigahertz is pretty broad. But then it breaks it down and tells me exactly what it is. So if it's a cellular signal, I know it's coming within, falling within this range here, and it's got a, a visual display to tell me that. And it breaks it down again to show me that it's either a Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or audio video continuous device. And then again, it allows me to break it down even further to identify which of those three it, it is. It has a directional antenna to tell me where it is, but in all honesty, I'm the, I don't really use this. I have to be honest, I don't, usually have it on because I find that if you're in relatively close proximity to the product anyway and you have it set to minimum there really is not a huge requirement for that to be on so there we have it they're the unique selling points for me I like the fact that it breaks it all down 
And the other thing is that's amazing that it doesn't, I don't think people really use this that often, I, I do, but the fact that you can transfer the data from the device, you plug it in, it automatically downloads to the memory stick, and you can then transfer that onto the computer. The only downfall with that is it has to be a PC at the moment. To my knowledge, it doesn't work with Apple products, but I'm sure that's something that's gonna change in time. Yep, just a reliable device. It, it's, it's my favorite. It's one that I tend to use if I go to sweep, which is about once a month because I don't tend to do them anymore. But when I do, I do the, I do sweeps to keep my finger on the pulse, so to speak, and I I always have this device with me. This is very reliable. I know it works. So I hope that gives you some insight as to how it works, how it functions. There are a few videos out there about this. There's one that JJN have done and it's, it's far more articulate than this one is. However, I feel like this was more of a practical demonstration as to how you can use it rather than just its functionality, etc. So I hope I've delivered on that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below the video on YouTube. Alternatively, you can send an email to me via my blog. I'm going to put this video on my blog so you can make comments on the blog there or send me an email directly. My email's on that page somewhere. So hit the subscribe button. There will be more videos in relation to technical surveillance countermeasures, uh, some of which will be product reviews. Some will be about new listening devices or covert cameras that have come out. I am a security consultant, so some of them might not be related to TSCM at all, but hit the subscribe button nonetheless. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> all right, thanks very much. Bye-bye.